Liam Hoekstra is not like any other toddler in the world. He has a rare muscle enlarging condition that gives him super strength. Because it's such a rare condition, nobody really knows what this abnormality is. At the moment, he's a medical mystery. There's only one known instance of a similar condition in this muscular breed of cattle known as super cows. Liam also has remarkable muscle definition, but so far he's been too young to have his strength evaluated. Now that he's three, experts can finally put his muscles to the test. I know what he can do, but I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> in an amazing twist, Liam's unique body could also hold the key to curing lethal muscle wasting diseases. It'd be awesome if they could learn from him. But discovering the secret to Liam's super strength could have dark repercussions. My sense is that if Liam's condition is better understood, it will immediately be misused by athletes. There's no question about it. Is the world's strongest toddler's unique gift a blessing or a curse? Come on. On the shores of Lake Michigan in the Midwestern city of Muskegon is a quiet suburban neighborhood. This is home to a little boy with a big story. Three-year-old Liam Hookstra lives with his 16-year-old sister Morgan and his parents Dana and Neil. We're blessed. I mean, to have two great kids. I jokingly look at my wife and say I have one that has you know, awesome brains, and I have one that has awesome brawn. Liam has virtually no body fat and larger than normal, well defined muscles. There you go, and you can see all the muscles in his back when he pulls up. You, got you know, he doesn't look all that much different. He does have well defined muscles, but they're not huge. He's not, doesn't look like some bodybuilder. Whereas most kids can barely hang, he will hang and pull himself up. He does everything but just a little bit more than, you know, the average three or four year old. Is that good? Today we have a treat now. Yes, he may have a treat now. He amazes us all the time we come here. Or, or there's always something different that he'll Yay. do it just because, you know, he can do it. <laughs> Doctors believe Liam has a rare condition that causes his muscles to grow much larger than normal. Like a bodybuilder, the trapezius muscles on his back are clearly defined. That's unheard of in a toddler. He also doesn't have the protruding abdomen common in children his age. Instead, his abs look like a bodybuilder's six-pack. Liam's biceps and triceps bulge. Yet his muscle definition is totally natural. Of course, he's never done any weight training. Who wouldn't want to have no body fat and, you know, larger than normal muscles and a high metabolism? So he can eat and eat and eat and, you know, doesn't, doesn't gain any weight. But doctors have yet to find out whether Liam's big muscles have also given him super strength. Just because you have big muscles doesn't mean you're particularly strong. And likewise, you can have very strong pe people that don't necessarily have very large muscles. I would like to see Liam, uh, Liam's strength uh, tested. I, I would like to see him compared to like another three-year-old so that we could see the difference in, in strength. In a week, that will happen when Liam takes a series of strength tests along with another toddler. While the family waits for answers, they have to live with a very special but very active little boy. I can see you. You can see me. He's got the energy of 10 children. He's running around. He's either on or off, but I've never seen him off. Liam's daily routine begins at 7 a.m. He's like a lot of kids. He's very hyper. He's active, but his muscles, his body, he's constantly go, 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 go. The three-year-old's parents fill his day with physically demanding activities. It's a desperate attempt to burn off some of his excess energy. The tickle monster is coming in. Ah, uh, it's gonna make me old in a hurry. <laughs> Today, even before nursery school, Liam is off to gymnastics class. Good boy. Feet together and stand up. 
Since Liam's first lesson, Coach Phil knew he was different from the other three-year-olds in his class. Hold yourself. Come on. The one thing that I've noticed with Liam is that he's proportionate. Most kids that are his age may have an upper body strength, but they're weak in other areas. All right, climb, dude. Climb up there, muscle man. He is able to muscle himself up much quicker than others because he has the strength, whereas a lot of the other kids don't because of the fact that that's the way most kids are born. Come on, you're almost up there. Go, Spider-Man. Go. I mean, Liam can climb the rope and ring the bell. All right. Whereas the other kids, you know, need um, Coach Phil to help them all the way up the rope. These kids, you're going to see me have to walk them up so because they're they're not strong enough to hold themselves yet whereas liam has to use his lower body to compensate because he's not using my hands all right he's very unique i mean speaking as a gymnastics coach i would love to have a whole bunch of little liams in my class because they would be very easy to get into that olympic level <laughs> all right liam i want you to show me hot dog all by yourself bring your feet up liam physically has the potential to do anything he wants to do in sport and excel in it. It comes down to if he desires to do it. You want to go really high? All right, here we go. He is drawn to sports. We're encouraging him to try everything so that you know he can eventually find his niche. It's not like we are forcing him into any of this. This is truly what he loves to do. It's 5 p.m. and Liam is still bursting with energy. But after a day at school, his 16-year-old sister, Morgan, isn't. <sighs> I'm exhausted after I babysit him. Because I'm following him around all the time. We're usually chasing after him, cleaning up a mess. I try to keep up with him, chase him around, wear him out. After Dad Neil comes home from work, he gives the rest of the family a break by taking his son to the gym. Even though it's 7 p.m. and most toddlers are getting ready for bed, Liam isn't even remotely tired. Woo! Okay, Liam, right here. Doctors have predicted that when he's an adult, Liam will be about five foot six, so he probably won't be a basketball star. There you go. But that doesn't keep him from enjoying a game with his dad. Come on. Oh, all right. All right, come over here. Ah. Ah. Got you. Come on. <laughs> Even after a day filled with physical exercise, Neil and Dana still struggle to get Liam to sleep. Our goal is to get in bed at 9. That never happens. So he's usually in bed 10 o'clock at the latest. But he really takes a long time to unwind. Oh, yeah. To go to sleep. Cover yourself up. Liam is too young to realize his unique condition has already caused a media frenzy. And now, a medical one as well. Liam Hookstra was born with a rare condition that's allowed his muscle mass to grow much larger than average. But that's not the only thing that makes him special to his parents. After years of trying to conceive a second child, they adopted Liam. And we're blessed to have two great kids, one biological and one not biological. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I don't even... Once in a while, somebody will say, well, your son's adopted, isn't he? And believe it or not, sometimes I have to sit there and think, you know, because, I mean, we've had him basically since day one. On September 1st, 2005, Liam was born almost five weeks early. Oh, who is that? Who is that? Liam, baby. You was Liam, baby. baby. <laughs> but despite being premature, baby Liam quickly revealed his remarkable strength. Look at that, no body fat, huh? Wow. When he was a day old, I did notice that, you know, he already put his feet down and were, like, bearing quite a bit of weight on his legs. Certainly he had no balance and, you know, um, yeah. not, co not coordinated at all, but I still thought it somewhat unusual that he could, you know, bear and his, his head. weight. He always lift his head up. Yeah, had great, you know, you know head strength and neck strength. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Look at you here. Okay, you're you were standing, standing up. Standing up all by yourself. Wow. He was very easily standing 
um, just as someone held his hands because he didn't have any balance, but he could easily, you know, stand and take some steps even just by holding his hands. You're kind of special, Liam, because you know why? Most kids that age aren't standing like that at no. all. Uh, five months old, I started taking some pictures of his legs, and, you know, I kept sending these pictures to my dad, and I was taking pictures of him saying, you got to look at his deltoids and his, you know, his, his thigh muscles, and he's like, you know, that is really just not normal. And yeah, what are you guys feeding him, or what are you yeah. giving him? <laughs> Can you see your muscles? Look at all your muscles. Whoa. Is that your little booty right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had lots of muscles when you were a baby, weren't you? Didn't you? This is amazing right here. Four months old, and he's sitting there pushing himself up. Look how strong you are. Goodness sakes. And it was really unusual because most kids that I had babysat that were his age were, could not do that. And I just thought that was really unusual that my brother could do that. Mm -hmm. He crawled at about four months old, but he could walk at five months old. Most children don't start walking until they're 15 months old. By six months old, he was going up the stairs, and by the next month, he was coming down the stairs, which made a lot of people nervous when they would come over to our house. They'd be like, you know, you don't have gates around your, your uh, stairs. What about your baby? And I'm like, he goes up and down the stairs just fine. And they'd be like, oh, my gosh. Normally, children can't walk up and down stairs upright until they're about two. He couldn't keep the gate up either because it'd wear holes in the wall because yeah. he constantly hung on the gate. Plus, he was moving my furniture around in the living room. He'd so he would yeah, push the chairs around, he would push the couch out. So I'd come in here, you know, after I would just leave him for two minutes to, you know, do something and come back in, and he's, you know, pushing a piece of, piece of furniture in the living room. He would climb up on our countertops just by putting his hand up and he would pull himself up. He could climb the refrigerator he'd, and he'd just kind of shimmy up it. I didn't know that there was any kind of condition that this could be, so... So we had an active... Yeah, we just figured, okay, we had a, <laughs> yeah, a strong kid. Liam's mother, Dana, is a physician's assistant. Thanks to her medical training, she understood the basics of Liam's advanced development. If we think about disease as a spectrum of abnormality, we usually think of it in the negative. Well, in this case, this is somebody who has abnormality in the positive direction. And how many parents go around taking their kids to the doctor because they're, they're stronger than the other kids in the neighborhood? It just doesn't happen. As Liam grew, he continued to show signs of exceptional strength. His grandpa couldn't contain his pride. He told his friends about his grandson's muscle power. One of them was local doctor, Erland Larson. He was just, uh, as all grandfathers do, doing a bit of bragging about his grandson, about uh, how strong he was, and a lot of things about how you could see the muscles on his body and so forth. And I asked him how young, his, how young the child was, and he said he was only 18 or 17 months. And it all sounded a, a little bit strange. Dr. Larson's like, no, no way. So we had him come over, and it's like, wow, you know, and he's scratching his head, and he's feeling Liam's, you know, the skin on him. And he's like, there's no fat on him. His uh, grandfather had told me that he could, you know, lift himself up with his arms, which is completely unheard of at that age. And so I tried lifting him up, and rather than leaving his arms fly up like a normal child would, he held on to them. And that, very few well-trained athletes can do. And then Dr. Larson's like, I think I read about this. Back in 2004, Dr. Larson had seen an article in a medical journal about an eight-year-old German boy who had super strength. This child was the first human to date that had been uh, diagnosed with a pure myostatin knockout deficiency. Myostatin is a gene that limits muscle growth beginning in the womb and continuing through life. Mutations in the myostatin gene can cause abnormal muscle growth, which is what happens in Belgian blue cattle. These super cows have sculpted muscular bodies. For them, this is a naturally occurring mutation. But myostatin was first discovered in the lab when a genetic engineer used the gene to create a new breed of rodent 
known as the Mighty Mouse. We engineered a strain of mice. We've deleted this gene, and these mice are um, quite unusual in that they have two to three times the muscle mass of regular mice. Dr. Larson wondered whether Liam's condition was also caused by a myostatin genetic defect. A couple days later, you know, he called us back and said, I think your son has something to do with this myostatin mm -hmm. deficiency. And we're like, what? The concern was that a defective gene could affect all of Liam's muscles, including the most crucial one, his heart. Liam Hoekstra's unique muscle enlarging disease has his parents worried. It could be caused by a genetic defect, and it might affect his heart muscle. My first thoughts were, now what? Is he going to have a short life? Do we have to worry about parts of him growing faster than other parts, or too much muscle here, not enough, you know? You know, what does the future hold? It was much to my relief that it doesn't affect smooth yeah. muscle and it doesn't affect cardiac muscle. Myostatin only affects skeletal muscle. Make the wobble. Okay. It's right there when you're ready. At first glance, it seemed Liam's condition was similar to that of the German child. But a closer look revealed differences. The German boy's body didn't create myostatin. Liam produces normal levels, but for some reason, it doesn't restrict his muscle growth. So doctors did some tests, like measuring Liam's leg muscles. They did the ultrasound of his thighs, and I was told that it was about 40% more than the average um, well, one-year-old at the time. Since Liam's condition was so rare, it caught local journalist Jeff Alexander's attention. He wanted to let the people of Muskegon know there was an extraordinary child living in their community. When I first met Liam, he was 18 months old. And 18 month old children, you expect to be sort of wobbling around on their feet. And Liam was sprinting around the room. Um, and then he grabbed the coffee table and was moving the coffee table. Um, and it was just astonishing how strong and agile this kid was. And our photographer had the same reaction. And we just sort of looked at each other like, holy cow, this kid is really um, an amazing specimen. was front page news and suddenly everyone knew about the toddler's super strength but while some admired his muscle power others feared it like the parents at a local nursery school now Liam attends the school five days a week but when he first enrolled it caused quite a stir obviously all the parents in the program have seen this article that's been published throughout our community and they are going to have some concerns with their children being in this program and is there going to be physical harm to the other children in the program some of the parents had expressed concern that he was going to be a brute and aggressive and and that that he might you know torment the other children um, so you know we had to kind of reassure the daycare and those parents that that that's not him yes he has he is stronger but he's not particularly aggressive and we've never really had to say Liam you need to be gentle Liam you need to settle down or remember that you're stronger and you may hurt someone we've we've not had to do that yeah I think so he's just the sweetest most loving little boy that is not aggressive in any form He's the same to us as any other child, and he comes here, he has friends, he's wonderfully adapted to our environment, and so for us it seems quite typical, quite normal, he's just Liam. Hi girls, all right, here we go. Okay, you a big boy today? Uh-huh. Okay, ready to kiss. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> he's a very loving child who is very conscientious of, of the other children around him. He's a caregiver. He typically takes care of the younger kids. He makes sure that their needs are met. If there's a new child that comes into the program, he befriends them immediately and shows them the ropes. He's a teacher by, by nature. 
Liam is much the same as his classmates in most aspects of school life, but not when it comes to physical activities. The increased muscle in his legs gives Liam more power, so he can run faster than the other children, like Trent. Liam, you run faster than me. One of the activities Liam and his classmates enjoy is playing on the chin-up bar. They try to pull themselves up without touching the wall. Whoa, look at you. All right, I got... From a developmental standpoint, this simple exercise is way beyond the abilities of an average three-year-old. They don't yet have the upper body strength for it. Good job. Okay. But Liam's overdeveloped biceps make it easy for him. Good job. <coughs> See how easy that was? <laughs> Liam's extraordinary strength has impressed classmates and teachers alike. Um, we have five and six year olds upstairs, and I know they can't do it either. What makes Liam even more remarkable is that he's been able to do a chin up since he was one year old. His ability to perform activities that require upper body strength is accelerated probably to twice his age. While Liam's large muscles appear to give him more power, experts have never been able to measure his strength. Only now that he's reached age three is he old enough to be put to the test. Three-year-old Liam Hookstra has 40% more muscle than a normal child. It seems that the only negative side effect to having an overdeveloped physique is that Liam is always hungry. For every additional pound of muscle, he needs about 50 extra calories. I'm hungry. Liam definitely eats a lot. He needs to eat a lot because he's more active than most kids his age, and he's more active, more intensely active. He just expends a lot more calories. Are you hungry, Liam? Yeah? Well, then there, try that. The nursery school has set times for the children to eat, but they've made special allowances for Liam. He has snacks in his locker so that if he gets um, hungry before, you know, a meal or a snack, that he, that he can get something out of his locker and eat it. Even though Liam eats constantly, his condition means he's unable to store body fat. That's a potential health risk, because toddlers need a certain amount of fat in their bodies to help their brains and nervous systems develop. When we uh, start going into like a starvation mode, we can kind of live off the land, for, for lack of a you know, better phrase, because um, we have excess um, body fat on us, whereas he does not. So when he goes into that starvation mode and he's not eating right and eating enough fat it'll uh, take the nutrients away from the brain and the and the spinal cord so he'll actually suffer damage are y'all dog bun uh-huh okay liam's remarkable body seems to give him exceptional strength but in the world of sports some believe his genetic gift will give him an unfair edge we all have unfair advantages in one way or another. Some of us recognize them and make it, some of us make it through life never even realizing them and never really allowing them to come to fruition. Liam's parents want him to enjoy his natural gift of large muscles and super strength. So they've introduced him to many different sports to see where he excels. He loves the water. He's been a fish since, you know, he was born. Um, it, it, it's been wonderful for the water him. water drives him crazy. The three-year-old's love of swimming, combined with his genetic differences, have led to comparisons with Olympic gold medalist Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps started swimming at a young age, and from my understanding is because he had so much bottled up energy that getting in the pool was a way for him to burn off some of that energy. Uh, we've also found that with Liam and his swimming, you know, it helps to burn up some of his energy. 
I definitely see him as a swimmer because he loves to swim. I, I would like to see him be in the Olympics like Michael Phelps. Besides going to the pool regularly with his dad, Liam has swimming lessons twice a week with his teacher, Laura. She's already noticed he has a natural talent for the sport. Hey, Liam, your back. Come over last week. How we floated on our back. Ready? Lay your legs still. It takes every muscle of your body to swim. The fact that he does have a lot of strength and muscle and the fact that he loves to swim and that he's really interested in it, I think he could go far with swimming. Scoopers in your hands, scoop. All right, keep going, good scoop. Like Liam, Michael Phelps also has his own genetic gift. After expending energy, his body has abnormally low levels of lactic acid, which gives Phelps an advantage over other swimmers. People who have in their ability to remove lactic acid from their system are able to recover more quickly from exercise and experience less fatigue in their muscles. Phelps' unique genetic difference has led some to question his seven world records and 14 Olympic gold medals. Are they the result of his physiological advantage over his competitors? It's a huge controversy in the field, actually, is whether or not people who are genetically gifted should be allowed to participate at the same level as everybody else. Clearly, there's training involved and dedication to sport and so many other things that go into um, fitness and competition and elite athleticism. All right, buddy, let's go. Neil and Dana worry that in the future, like Phelps, Liam could also suffer unfair criticism or even discrimination. I have had some people come up to me on the street and say, well, don't you think that that would be somewhat unfair for him to play sports? And I think, well, no. <laughs> but it's not only Liam's parents who are concerned about genetic discrimination in the future. Congress recently passed the GINA Act to prohibit just that. GINA stands for Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. And with this goal that if you test somebody's DNA, maybe you sequence all their DNA, you can never discriminate based on what you learn from that genetic information. Pull, pull, bring your legs over to bar. Over to In bar, some bar. countries, over, children over. are already being tested for genetic differences that could help them excel in particular sports. Dr. Eric Kaufman thinks the result will be that many youngsters will miss out. Gina should apply to gym class, where you can't discriminate on gym class by giving the ones with the good muscle genes access to the class and not those without them. Today, doctors will take a sample of Liam's DNA. They want to determine why his muscles have grown 40% larger than usual for his age, even though his body produces normal levels of myostatin. Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to put this little swab right in your mouth, so I'm going to have to have you open your mouth really big and wide, and then I'm going to rub it on the inside of your cheeks. Cool. Won't hurt at all. You and ready? Open your mouth real wide, real wide, bigger. Ah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Was it tickled? <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh. He tickled. Well, that's all we need to do. Well, I'll, we'll have this sent out for uh, genetic analysis. And maybe we can figure it out. Yeah. Mr. I'm full of energy all the time. <laughs> At the Children's National Medical Center in Washington, D.C., Dr. Eric Hoffman heads a team conducting clinical trials looking into muscle wasting diseases. They hope this research will ultimately lead to a cure for muscular dystrophy. The most common form is called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's been known for hundreds of years. Um, most common worldwide of any type of genetic disease. It's mostly young boys who are normal up until about three or four years of age, but then their muscle slowly loses function. They're generally in a wheelchair by 11 years and often die before they're 20. Dr. Hoffman believes understanding Liam's genetic difference could really benefit his research. 
Patients with muscular dystrophy, particularly Duchenne muscular dystrophy, are at sort of one extreme where they are, their muscle is not working well and they're losing muscle relatively quickly with age. I think Liam is at the other extreme where at a young age he's gained a lot of muscle and strength. And if we can use that knowledge to bring Duchenne patients more towards normality, that would be a great boon for all patients. But not everyone will use this knowledge for good. My sense is that if Liam's condition is better understood, it will immediately be misused by athletes. Myostatin hasn't been known for very long, and almost immediately after its discovery, you could go online and purchase um, myostatin inhibitors that were used by bodybuilders all over the world. Um, now, were they scientifically validated? No, not whatsoever. But were they immediately a target for misuse? Most definitely. Previously, Liam was too young to have his strength evaluated. But now that he's three, for the first time, experts can test his large muscles to see if they really make him stronger. Will the test reveal great potential for Liam's future or some hidden genetic disaster? At age three, muscle-bound Liam Hoekstra is finally old enough for doctors to test his strength. But first, being a huge football fan, Father Neil wants to know whether his son's muscular body will make him a future football star. To find out, Neil and Liam meet with Ken Byard, a football coach who trains 16 and 17 year olds. As a father, I would love to see him be a great, you know, football player. I'd love to see him play for University of Michigan. For him someday to play for them would be awesome. How you doing, Ken? Hi. Neil Hookstra. Ken Byer, nice to meet you. This is my son, Liam. Hi, Liam. Can you say hi? A little ball of energy, huh? <laughs> and he's, he's what, three? He's three years three. old, and he likes football. He likes all kinds of sports. Yeah. So what he's going to be good at, we're not sure. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe football. Yeah. Because he's got that core muscle. Core strength. Yeah. I can just see the difference in the stability and how he can move and all oh, his balance is unique. It's weird. It's yeah. That's cool. My only concern is is uh, his height. Sure. Five foot six, five foot eight. Yeah, that does. Uh, I mean, that limits obviously some of your opportunities. Obviously, at five eight, you're not going to be a lineman. You know, right. you probably right. won't be a quarterback. Exactly. But uh, you know, anything's possible. Yeah. You know. It seems that Liam is showing early signs of having good technique. You know, his, his feet are even right when he throws the ball. Is it? That's amazing. He throws across the body with proper Here. form. He grabbed Throw. it like you're supposed Throw. to. And a lot of that's just attributed to having a, a strong foundation, you know, physically. Perfect. Nice and high. Now, you got to look where you're throwing. Look where you're throwing, remember? You see, you see him step on that foot? I saw that. You did it perfect. Give me five. Good job. All right. I'm going to throw it high. Nice catch. Good job. Liam has clearly impressed Ken with his abilities. But with years of coaching experience, Ken has seen the pitfalls of doing too much too young. I'll throw it to you, spin, and then run. So often nowadays, Parents limit opportunities because they want to specialize. They got to focus mm -hmm. on one thing, and and they forget to let kids play, and, and that goes from three till kids are in high school, um, and they don't get a chance to be kids, right. and that's sad. And but, I agree with you. I mean, you need to let these kids find themselves. Yeah. Tomorrow, Liam and his family will finally discover how much stronger his extra muscles make him as he undergoes strength testing for the first time. Old Liam Hookstra has already been diagnosed with having 40% more muscle than an average toddler, but doctors don't know if this makes him stronger. Ted Quick and Michelle Ward are strength and conditioning specialists in sports medicine. Today they'll run some standardized strength tests on Liam. 
These tests aren't normally done on children under six. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of data on, on young children and their strength. It's difficult to get a young child to cooperate with good strength tests. Okay, Owen, Liam. To motivate Liam to do the tests and to provide a comparison, Owen will also take part. Although they're the same age, Owen is five and a half inches taller and 12 pounds heavier. Can you get up on your hands, Liam? Hey, Liam, I've heard that you can do a sit-up, and I haven't seen you do one yet. So do you think that you can... Well, look at that. The first strength test requires Liam and Owen to do as many sit-ups as they can in one minute. Keep going. Owen struggles to complete one, while Liam ticks them off effortlessly. Good job. Ah, Go give Owen high five. You did 17 in one minute. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> How many did Owen do? I completed one all the way. Not one complete rep. Was that tough to do those sit-ups? Yeah. Ted is impressed that Liam has the core strength and skill to do sit-ups when he's still only a toddler. The, the coordination is really difficult to do, not to mention, obviously, the abdominal strength, just to do a sit-up against your body weight, where, you know, obviously, he was able to do probably more than what I could do. <laughs> he would probably be the norm with the sit-up, not being able to complete it and very uncoordinated with it. This is the percentile chart for the President's Challenge okay. uh, that we use in the schools um, here in the States. And Liam did 17 repetitions. Uh, he would actually fall in the 30th percentile rank for a six-year-old, which is double his age. I mean, I know what he can do, but where he falls and where he lies, I mean, with a six-year-old, I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> Strength naturally increases with age because of body growth and development of the neuromuscular system. But so far, Liam's performance suggests he's developmentally and physically ahead of his peers. The idea that Liam was able to, to do this test and perform at a level that put him in the range of, of six-year-old performance, I think, is really remarkable. See, on your mark, get set, go, Put your feet okay? on there, okay? Scooch up. Scooch forward, bye. The next test is to do push-ups, but Liam and Owen are too young to understand what they need to do. Hands like that. In all the confusion, Liam still manages to show his amazing strength. Keep holding, keep holding, keep holding. Walk around, you find Nice it. job. Great job, buddy. He was doing the push-ups. And all of a sudden, he just went one arm, put his arm behind his back, and looked at us like, hmm, you know, trying to listen to us. Not knowing what he was doing, a normal three-year-old can't do, you know. I mean, we're all looked at each other like, did you just see that? Yeah, I mean, it was like... Nonchalant, he just did this. So the next test we're going to have them perform is a hand dynamometer test. And basically it's just going to measure the amount of force that they are able to exert on the machine. And we can measure that in either kilograms of force or pounds of force. Owen goes first. I want you to go ahead and squeeze it as hard as you can. Go ahead. Squeeze. squeeze. And relax. Okay. So Owen even had a little trouble holding on to the weight of the hand dynamometer. So on that one, he had two kilograms. Now it's Liam's turn. He has no problem with the heavy lifting. Now I want you to give me a big squeeze. Spray, spray, spray. Oh, that was a good one. That one all the way across the room. Good job. And relax. Good job. And that one is six. So six kilograms. The children have to perform the test three times. Owen's grip test average was almost four and a half pounds, and Liam's average was three times more at about 13 pounds. And this is a test that I didn't predict that he would be able to do, and he performed in the range of a seven-year-old. Now, it was at the low range of a seven-year-old, but he's three, and uh, I was i really amazed by that. The purpose of this test is to measure grip, or forearm muscle strength. People with strong hands also tend to be strong elsewhere. Okay, yeah. hey, hang up here. Put your hands up there. Okay, ready? Pull yourself up and touch your nose. The final test is to see how long the three-year-olds can hold their own weight by hanging from the bar. They're also asked to pull themselves up. Liam's results yeah, are amazing. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Pull yourself up. Pull yourself up. Pull up. Pull up. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Can you pull up again? Pull up again. Go, go, go. Pull. Pull up again. Show me, show me, you can do it. Uh, <coughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Liam was
was able to hold for 13 seconds, and Owen was able to hold for 7.19 seconds, which is pretty. pretty so again, impressive. almost twice as much. Yep, almost twice as much again. The the ability to do a, a pull up is a real good gauge of upper extremity strength, yeah. and you know Owen kind of struggled even to pull himself up. Where Liam was able to do a couple, he just wasn't that interested in doing many more. Yeah. This is a remarkably challenging test for many people, uh, and his score put him in the 85th percentile of six-year-olds, meaning that he was stronger than 85% of six-year-olds out there, and he's three. Boy. Yeah, it'd be nice and even in a, uh, a couple of years when he gets a little older to test him when he kind of fits into some of the, the parameters. Absolutely. And probably improve, improve you know, strength-wise even more because he likes to work out, obviously. Maybe we'll use him for some motivation for our older students in the high schools <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and show them that this three-year-old can do a chin-up, so can you. It's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back home, Neil shares Liam's remarkable results with mom, Dana. It shows that, you know, not only does he have larger muscles than, you know, other three-year-olds, but that truly the, he has more strength than other three-year-olds. Um, the head-to-head -head data here is a little bit more concrete than just saying, you know, oh, look at his muscle mass. And plus, right now, you don't even really know him differently from any other kids, unless you take your shirt off and... Yeah. It's really hard to tell so, that he this is something, has this condition. Yeah, it's something very interesting as far as how these muscles react and how strong they are when they don't even look strong. Mm -hmm. Neil and Dana finally have proof that their son's larger-than-normal muscles do give him super strength. But until they get the results of his full DNA profile, which will take several months, Liam's rare genetic condition remains a medical mystery. At some point in time, we may understand what's different about Liam, and hopefully that will lead at some point to better understanding of the different diseases where people have muscle wasting and uh, loss of muscle and be able to reverse that process. No one yet knows whether Liam's unique body will help find a cure for lethal muscle-wasting diseases, or whether, thanks to his extraordinary strength, he's predestined to be a future Olympian. Honestly, at three years old, I haven't really looked that far down into the future. You know, yeah, I just we... want Liam to be happy, and if it's not in sports, then so be it. I just think he's a really great story, and he's going to be fun to watch for many years. But no matter what the future holds for this remarkably strong toddler, for now, Liam is just happy being Liam. I'm holding on tight. And, um, so, you know, we had to kind of reassure the daycare and those parents that, that that's not him. Yes, he has, he is stronger, but he's not particularly aggressive. never really had to say Liam you need to be gentle Liam you need to settle down or remember that you're stronger and you may hurt someone we've we've not had to do that yeah I think so he's just the sweetest most loving little boy that is not aggressive in any form he's the same to us as any other child and he comes here he has friends he's wonderfully adapted to our environment and so for us it seems quite typical quite normal he's just liam hi girls all right here we go okay hey big boy today mm -hmm. okay kiss. Bye. 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 Love you. bye bye <laughs> he's a very loving child who is very conscientious of of the other children around him He's a caregiver. He typically takes care of the younger kids. He makes sure that their needs are met. If there's a new child that comes into the program, he befriends them immediately and shows them the ropes. He's a teacher by, by nature. Liam is much the same as his classmates in most aspects of school life, but not when it comes to... Wear holes in the wall because yeah. he constantly hung on the gate. Plus, he was moving my furniture around in the living room. So push he would yeah, push the chairs around. He would push the couch out. So I'd come in here, you know, after I would just leave him for two minutes to, you know, do something and come back in. And he's, you know, pushing a piece of, piece of furniture in the living room. He 
would climb up on our countertops just by putting his hand up and he would pull himself up. He could climb the refrigerator he'd, and he'd just kind of shimmy up it. I didn't know that there was any kind of condition that this could be. So, so we had an active. Yeah, we fast just figured, okay, learning. we had a, <laughs> yeah, a strong kid. Liam's mother, Dana, is a physician's assistant. Thanks to her medical training, she understood the basics of Liam's advanced development. If we think about disease as a spectrum of abnormality, we usually think of it in the negative. Well, in this case, this is somebody who has abnormality in the positive direction. And how many parents go around taking their kids to the doctor because they're, they're stronger than the other kids in the neighborhood? It just doesn't happen. As Liam grew, he continued to show signs of exceptional strength. His grandpa couldn't contain his pride. He told his friends about his grandson's muscle power. One of them was local doctor Erland Larson. You know, need um, Coach Phil to help them all the way up the rope. These kids, you're going to see me have to walk them up, so because they're they're not strong enough to hold themselves yet. Whereas Liam has to use his lower body to compensate because he's not using my hands. All right. He's very unique. I mean, speaking as a gymnastics coach, Good, I would going. love to have a whole bunch of little Liams in my class because keep they going, would be guys. very keep easy going. to get into that Olympic level. <laughs> All right, Liam, I want you to show me hot dog all by yourself. Bring your feet up. Liam physically has the potential to do anything he wants to do in sport and excel in it. It comes down to if he desires to do it. You want to go really high? All right, here we go. He is drawn to sports. We're encouraging him to try everything so that, you know, he can eventually find his niche. It's not like we are forcing him into any of this. is truly what he loves to do. It's 5 p.m. and Liam is still bursting with energy. But after a day at school, his 16-year-old sister, Morgan, isn't. <sighs> I'm exhausted after I babysit him. Because I'm following him around all the time. I'm usually chasing after him, cleaning up a mess. I try to keep up with him, chase him around, wear him out. After Dad Neil comes home from work, he gives the rest of the family a break by... The most common form is called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's been known for hundreds of years. Um, most common worldwide of any type of genetic disease. It's mostly young boys who are normal up until about three or four years of age, but then their muscle slowly loses function. They're generally in a wheelchair by 11 years and often die before they're 20. Dr. Hoffman believes understanding Liam's genetic difference could really benefit his research. Patients with muscular dystrophy, particularly Duchenne muscular dystrophy, are at sort of one extreme where they are, their muscle is not working well and they're losing muscle relatively quickly with age. I think Liam is at the other extreme where at a young age he's gained a lot of muscle and strength. And if we can use that knowledge to bring Duchenne patients more towards normality, that would be a great boon for all patients. But not everyone will use this knowledge for good. My sense is that if Liam's condition is better understood, it will immediately be misused by athletes. Myostatin hasn't been known for very long, and almost immediately after its discovery, you could go online and purchase um, myostatin inhibitors that were used by bodybuilders all over the world. Um, now, were they scientifically validated? No, not whatsoever. But were they immediately a target for misuse? Most definitely. So do you think that you can, well, look at that. The first strength test requires Liam and Owen to do as many sit-ups as they can in one minute. Keep going. Owen struggles to complete one, while Liam ticks them off effortlessly. Good job. Ah, nice nice work. Go give Owen high five. You did 17 Good in job. one minute. Yeah. Good, Good job. job. <laughs> How many did Owen do? I um, completed one all the way. Not one complete yeah. rep. Was that tough to do those sit-ups? Yeah. Ted is impressed that Liam has the core strength and skill to do sit-ups when he's still only a toddler. The, the coordination is really difficult to do, not to mention, obviously, the abdominal strength, just to do a sit-up against your body weight, where, you know, obviously, he was able to do probably more than what I could do. <laughs> <laughs> you would probably be the norm with the sit-up, not being able to complete it and very uncoordinated with it. 
This is the percentile chart for the President's Challenge okay. uh, that we use in the schools um, here in the States. And Liam did 17 repetitions. Uh, he would actually fall in the 30th percentile rank for a six-year-old, which is double his age. I mean, I know what he can do, but where he falls and where he lies, I mean, with a six-year-old, I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> Strength naturally increases with age because of body growth and development of the neuromuscular system. But so far, Liam's performance suggests he's developmentally and physically ahead of his peers. The idea that Liam was able to on or off, but I've never seen him off. Liam's daily routine begins at 7 a.m. He's like a lot of kids. He's very hyper, he's active, but his muscles, his body, he's constantly go, 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 go. The three-year-old's parents fill his day with physically demanding activities. It's a desperate attempt to burn off some of his excess energy. The tickle monster is coming in. Ah, uh, it's going to make me old in a hurry. <laughs> Today, even before nursery school, Liam is off to gymnastics class. Good boy. Feet together and stand up. Since Liam's first lesson, Coach Phil knew he was different from the other three-year-olds in his class. Hold yourself. Come on. The one thing that I've noticed with Liam is that he's proportionate. Most kids that are his age may have an upper body strength, but they're weak in other areas. All right, climb, dude. Climb up there, muscle man. He is able to muscle himself up much quicker than others because he has the strength, whereas a lot of the other kids don't because of the fact that that's the way most kids are born. Come on, you're almost up there. Go, Spider-Man. Go. I mean, Liam can climb the rope or ring the bell. All right. Whereas the other kids, you know, need um, Coach Phil to help them all the way up the rope. These kids, you're going to see me have to walk them up. Having 40% more muscle than an average toddler. But doctors don't know if this makes him stronger. Ted Quick and Michelle Ward are strength and conditioning specialists in sports medicine. Today, they'll run some standardized strength tests on Liam. These tests aren't normally done on children under six. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of data on, on young children and their strength. It's difficult to get a young child to cooperate with good strength tests. Okay, Owen, Liam. To motivate Liam to do the test and to provide a comparison, Owen will also take part. Although they're the same age, Owen is five and a half inches taller and 12 pounds heavier. Can you get up on your hands, right. Liam? Hey, Liam, I've heard that you can do a sit-up, and I haven't seen you do one yet. So do you think that you can... Well, look at that. The first strength test requires Liam and Owen to do as many sit-ups as they can in one minute. Owen struggles to complete one, while Liam ticks them off effortlessly. Good job. Ah, Go give Owen high five. You did 17 Good in job. one minute. Yeah. Good, Good job. job. <laughs> How many did Owen do? I <laughs> completed one all the way. Not one complete yeah. rep. Was that tough to do those sit-ups? Yeah. Ted is impressed that Liam has the core strength and skill to do sit-ups when he's still only a toddler. The coordination is really difficult to do, not to mention, obviously, the abdominal. way for him to burn off some of that energy. Uh, we've also found that with Liam and his swimming, you know, it helps to burn up some of his energy. I definitely see him as a swimmer because he loves to swim. I, I would like to see him be in the Olympics like Michael Phelps. Besides going to the pool regularly with his dad, Liam has swimming lessons twice a week with his teacher, Laura. She's already noticed he has a natural talent for the sport. Hey, you lay on your back and over last week. How we floated on our back. Uh -huh. Ready? Lay your legs still. It takes every muscle of your body to swim. The fact that he does have a lot of strength and muscle, and the fact that he loves to swim and that he's really interested in it, I think he could go far with swimming. Scoopers in your hands, scoop. Like Liam, Michael Phelps also has his own genetic gift. After expending energy, his body has abnormally low levels of lactic acid, which gives Phelps an advantage over other swimmers. 
people who have in their ability to remove lactic acid from their system are able to recover more quickly from exercise and experience less fatigue in their muscles. Phelps' unique genetic difference has led some to question. You know, he was born. Um, it, it, it's been wonderful for the water him. Water drives him crazy. The three-year-old's love of swimming, combined with his genetic differences, have led to comparisons with Olympic gold medalist Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps started swimming at a young age, and from my understanding is because he had so much bottled up energy that getting in the pool was a way for him to burn off some of that energy. Uh, we've also found that with Liam and his swimming, you know, it helps to burn up some of his energy. I definitely see him as a swimmer because he loves to swim. I, I would like to see him be in the Olympics like Michael Phelps. Besides going to the pool regularly with his dad, Liam has swimming lessons twice a week with his teacher, Laura. She's already noticed he has a natural talent for the sport. Hey, Liam, your back. Come over last week. How we floated on our back. Uh -huh. Ready? Okay. Lay your legs still. It takes every muscle of your body to swim. The fact that he does have a lot of strength and muscle and the fact that he loves to swim and that he's really interested in it, I think he could go far with swimming. Scoopers in your hands, scoop. All right, keep going, good scoop. Like Liam, Michael Phelps also has his own genetic gift. After expending energy, his body has abnormally low levels of lactic acid, which gives Phelps... Okay, it's right there when you're ready. At first glance, it seemed Liam's condition was similar to that of the German child. But a closer look revealed differences. The German boy's body didn't create myostatin. Liam produces normal levels, but for some reason, it doesn't restrict his muscle growth. So doctors did some tests, like measuring Liam's leg muscles. They did the ultrasound of his thighs, and I was told that it was about 40% more than the average um, well, one-year-old at the time. Since Liam's condition was so rare, it caught local journalist Jeff Alexander's attention. He wanted to let the people of Muskegon know there was an extraordinary child living in their community. When I first met Liam, he was 18 months old. And 18-month-old children, you expect to be sort of wobbling around on their feet. And Liam was sprinting around the room. Um, and then he grabbed the coffee table and was moving the coffee table. Um, and it was just astonishing how strong and agile this kid was. And our photographer had the same reaction. And we just sort of looked at each other like, holy cow, this kid is really um, an amazing specimen. I can help you. You ready for go to school today? Yeah. was front page news. See the muscles on his body and so forth and I asked him how young, his, how young the child was and he said he was only 18 or 17 months and it all sounded a, a little bit strange. Dr. Larson's like, no, no way. So he had him come over and it's like, wow, you know, and he's scratching his head and he's feeling Liam's, you know, the skin on him and he's like, there's no fat on him. His uh, grandfather told me that he could, you know, lift himself up with his arms, which is completely unheard of at that age. And so I tried lifting him up, and rather than leaving his arms fly up like a normal child would, he held on to them, and that very few well-trained athletes can do. And then Dr. Larson's like, I think I've read about this. Back in 2004, Dr. Larson had seen an article in a medical journal about an eight-year-old German boy who had super strength. This child was the first human to date that had been uh, diagnosed with a pure myostatin knockout deficiency. Myostatin is a gene that limits muscle growth beginning in the womb and continuing through life. Mutations in the myostatin gene can cause abnormal muscle growth, which is what happens in Belgian blue cattle. These super cows have sculpted muscular bodies. For them, this is a naturally occurring mutation. And it was just astonishing how strong and agile this kid was. And our photographer had the same reaction. And we just sort of looked at each other like, 
holy cow, this kid is really um, an amazing specimen. I can help you. You ready for go to school today? story was front page news and suddenly everyone knew about the toddler's super strength. But while some admired his muscle power, others feared it. Like the parents at a local nursery school. Now Liam attends the school five days a week, but when he first enrolled, it caused quite a stir. Obviously all the parents in the program have seen this article that's been published throughout our community and they are going to have some concerns with their children being in this program and is there going to be physical harm to the other children in the program. Some of the parents had expressed concern that he was going to be a brute and aggressive and, and that the, he might you know, torment the other children. Um, so you know we had to kind of reassure the daycare and those parents that that that's not him. Yes, he has, he is stronger, but he's not particularly aggressive. And we've never really had to say, Liam, you need to be gentle. Liam, you need to settle down or 